Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of And Action Filmmaking Podcast. I'm Tommy DiNucci, as always, here with my esteemed co-host, Mikey Messier. We're very excited. It's a wonderful time of year. It's it's actually one of my favorite times of year, because if you're a sports junkie like myself, you're in the midst of it right now. We've got March Madness going. We've got the NBA playoffs coming up, NHL playoffs. The MLB baseball season's about to start up. And if you're a big football fan like myself, we got the NFL draft coming up real soon. Everybody's going to uh, be wide-eyed looking at these new prospects coming into the league. So it's a really fun time of year for us sports fans. Even if you're a fight fan, uh, UFC 300 is coming up, which is going to be a monumental sporting event. Uh, so I figured, you know what, Mike, this is a great time to come on and talk about a genre that in its own right is a great American pastime, and that is sports movies. Uh, I've worked on some sports movies. Mike has worked on some sports movies. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about our favorite sports movies and break down the formula, right? Because that's what this show is all about. We're going to break down the formula and decide what is it about these sports movies that are so great that keep us coming back. You can almost tell the same stories over and over again. And we don't care because we just love that genre so much. Uh, but before we get into that, if I'm a little tired today, I apologize in advance. I had a little wild night last night. Um, I'm currently uh, in the editing process, working on the movie that I shot down in Mississippi not too long ago. And, you know, I'm working with a West Coast editor, so uh, we're on different time zones. And I knew a cut would be coming in based off of some notes that I made last night. And I was kind of staying up and staying up. And fighting it, dozing off, watching some TV. It's like 11 o'clock, midnight, checking my emails, still don't have that link to watch. And we have a session today, later on, actually after this show. So I got to watch that movie. And then sure enough, I get into some uh, dark side of the ring. I'm watching a, a show that I like. It's like 1.30, 2 in the morning. And I kind of like, with one eye open, check my email and I notice, oh man, like a minute after I had last checked my email, like probably right around like 12.05 or whatever, the movie came in. So here I am, you know, laying on the couch watching murder shows and wrestling documentaries when I could have been watching my movie. So I said to myself, you know what, I'm just going to watch the first 15 minutes. It's two in the morning. Like I, I can't stay up all night. I'll just watch 15 minutes. And I'm pleased to say, and this is part because I really enjoyed all the, the changes this editor made. Uh, I watched the whole movie just about, you know, and there I am till, you know, almost four in the morning, kind of like a zombie watching this film. Uh, but I, uh, I kicked out, I fired up, I set the old alarm, I got my workout in this morning, so I'm fired up, I'm ready to go, we're, uh, we're running on Red Bull today, cheap plug if you guys would like to sponsor me, uh, and uh, here we go, Mike, uh, but I, I, I heard off air you told me that you had a little bit of a nocturnal session yourself. Yeah, Tommy, I've been uh, having an interesting sleep month the whole month of March 2024 that we're currently in. My sleep schedule has been way off, buddy, and uh, I found myself uh, editing my novel, Fighter Play Basketball, which is a sports story, but I was basically, for the last several weeks, I've printed up the whole, s the novel's already published on Amazon, buddy, but, you know, I self-published, I was my own editor, so here I am two years after the book's been published and I've reprinted the whole thing and I'm making little tweaks and changes. And basically what I'm doing is if a, if a paragraph has 25 words, I'm trying to chop that down to 20, you know, but basically for the whole book type of thing. So I was up till eight in the morning, buddy. And then I had to set the old trusty phone alarm to be here today, but I'm glad I did. And uh, here we are. Well, brother, I uh, appreciate your one-upsmanship for saying, you know, I was up till four, you were up till eight. Okay, you know, listen, uh, it's tough. You're a, <laughs> you're a night hawk, Mike. You're a night hawk. You've got the hawk right on your shirt there today. Um, That's the uh, sure. eagle fang, buddy. Eagle fang, oh, which uh, yes, it, yes. I don't know if you've been watching um, the Karate Kid reboot, but that is uh, the group that um, is the merger of two warring factions, Cobra Kai, and then uh, okay. and then the Karate Kid has his own, um, as an adult, he has his own dojo, and uh, they they merge into cool. like Eagle Fang. Eagle Fang, rock and yeah. roll. Actually, Lazda just made a comment about the Karate Kid. We'll get into the comments in a little bit. 
Uh, so let's get right into it, guys. You know, the reason why uh, I decided to, you know, Mike and I were going to talk about sports today, n- not only because it is such a sports rich time of year, uh, but I actually just got hired to write a movie with the backdrop of football that I'm really excited about. Football is by far one of my favorite sports, if not my favorite sport. Uh, so I'm really excited to be working on this 1950s period piece about the game of football, which uh, I'm really fired up about because anybody who knows the history of sports knows that the game was a little different in the 50s. You know, guys weren't even wearing face masks on their football helmets. Uh, it took a different breed of, of human being to play that game back then when there weren't as many rules to protect the health and safety of the players uh it was kind of a a game for warriors uh and that's what i'm writing about now and it just got me thinking man like all these sports movies there's such a important part of the fabric of our pop culture really i mean and there's so many of them we're going to talk about our favorites i know we're going to inevitably miss a few really great ones when we talk today uh but you know you think about movies like rocky that have won Oscars for the best picture. Uh, You know, you think of movies like even The Sandlot, which have this kind of wholesome kind of feel to them. Uh, Hoosiers, really every sport you can think of just about, whether it's hockey, basketball, baseball, football, karate, boxing, MMA, there's probably not just a movie for it, but a really great classic movie for it that we all love and can almost quote. I mean, these sports movies have become such a part of our being that they're so quotable now. And and like I said, they're just part of pop culture. So, Mike, what is it about sports that make us so fascinated? Why are we so fascinated by these gods among men on the playing field? Well, I think one aspect of it, Tommy, is, uh, in a word, uh, cliché. You know, I think that uh, clichés are something that we normally avoid in life. We try to. We we think that clichés are redundant and uh, non-dramatic, but in the world of sports, cliches are kind of fun and we're used to them and things like sportsmanship and I'm just here to make the ball team better, like uh, Tim Robbins' character says in Bull Durham, you know, in that famous uh, interview segment. And uh, But we love the underdog. We love the, you know, Rocky story of any type of underdog. It doesn't have to be a boxer. It could be any underdog. We love the story of uh, what was that movie with Denzel Washington as a football coach in Virginia, not too far from where I grew up, actually? Remember the Titans. Yeah, T.C. Williams, which was basically about sports as a bridge uh, between racial divides. So we love the we love that, that sports can bring people together that otherwise would not be together. And um, so uh, a movie I just saw recently, Tommy, you know, I was going to say, like, certain films – uh, you know, basically like a boxing movie like Rocky tapped into a sport that was already very popular at the time. When Rocky came out, I think Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, and Joe Frazier were all at the top of their heavyweight boxing game. But if you take a look at something like um, Arthur the King, which is a movie with Mark Wahlberg that's in theaters now, that movie is about a sport that I didn't know existed until I saw the movie, which is adventure racing. I didn't even know that sport existed, Tommy, until I saw... Uh, Mark Wahlberg in this movie, which based on true events. So uh, another thing that I would say is that sometimes a movie can introduce us to a sport that a lot of people didn't know was around, and sometimes it's a sport that we all know is around. So it's, it's it can go in so many ways why we love these sports films. Yeah, that's a great way to sum it up. I do think that a big part of it is this common ground that we can all kind of uh, get excited about. Everybody loves a winner, right? We've heard that a million times. Everybody loves a winner. We love to see people win. Uh, We love to see people come back from great odds. You know, a lot of great sports movies follow formulas, right? A lot of writing a movie is formula-based, okay? You know, so if you look at these sports movies and you break down the formula, a lot of times, Mike said a big word, underdog. Everybody loves an underdog. Nobody wants to see the person who's supposed to win when we want to be surprised we want to be shocked we want to get behind someone that probably under normal circumstances wouldn't have a chance uh and i think that that all gives us some relatability in our own lives i mean i don't know about you but 
uh, you know, we'll use Rocky as an example. And I promise I'm going to try to not use Rocky too many times. Rocky just happens to be one of my favorite movies of all times. And, uh, you know, I, I think that if you broke it down and ranked the greatest sports movies, it, it would definitely be in that top 10. Um, but I think that we can all relate to being overwhelmed by a challenge. Something that seems to be unobtainable, uh, but you kind of dig down deep and you find a special uh, kind of almost like a, an extra fuel reserve, an extra energy chamber that you didn't know existed that you can kind of tap into and you can strive for greatness. And I think that you could watch Rocky and get fired up for that big job interview you've got coming up. You could watch Rocky and get excited about, uh, you know, whatever you have, whatever challenge you have, that movie will probably get you motivated, get you inspired. Um, but I think it's the fact that, you know, it takes normal people for the most part, puts them in extraordinary situations and forces them to rise to a challenge. You know, one of my favorite sports movies is Rudy. You know, you take a look at Rudy. Rudy tells the story of this uh, kind of, you know, undersized, really, you know, mediocre talent at best kind of a football player who doesn't even belong going to Notre Dame, uh, probably didn't have the grades for it to begin with. Uh, and he just grits and bears and kind of forces himself and gets on the playing field, you know, and it's this amazing moment, you know, the whole crowd chants Rudy. And I mean, you better check your pulse if you're not at least a little teary eyed at the end of that movie when everybody is chanting Rudy's name. And finally, after the years of bullshit that he's been through, this kid's on the field. Um, so, I mean, I, look, I get goosebumps just thinking about it, man. I mean, it's really exciting to think of these like, just incredible moments that we get to kind of almost like a ritual, Mike. I think there's an element of uh, maybe tribalism could be the word, or it's like, it's like, it's like a ritual. Sports movies are like a ritual. It's like, we almost know what the fuck's going to happen. You could kind of, you could kind of assume that, you know, your hero is either going to win or if they don't necessarily win, they will gain the respect of their peers. That's another common formula. For example, and this is the last time, look at Rocky, yeah. right? A lot of people don't realize this. And when I was a kid, it kind of like didn't dawn on me. But Rocky loses the fight in the first Rocky movie, the most heralded one of the, the franchise. He fucking loses. But it doesn't matter because he proves that he has what it takes to hang. And sometimes proving that it takes, proving you have what it takes to hang is just as important as winning. Because as they say in the wrestling business, you don't have to get over to go over. Mike, do you want to explain what that means? Yeah, they, they use that in terms of, uh, we can use an example that some of the fans uh, might know. Uh, Tommy Dreamer and Raven had this big feud in uh, Extreme Championship Wrestling 30-something years ago, and basically Raven would win practically every single night that he would fight Tommy Dreamer, but the fans were cheering Tommy because he had the warrior spirit and he was fighting the good fight and fighting for the love of uh, Beulah McGillicuddy and fighting all these goons that Raven was throwing at him, like uh, the Dudleys and primetime Brian Lee. So although Tommy Dreamer did not get over, Raven uh, got over, meaning he was the winner, uh, Tommy gets over because he gets over the fans love uh, through all these uh, losses and eventually five or six years into it he finally gets a victory over raven so uh like you said with the rocky i, I, I love how i love how you say that that's a reference that all of our fans will understand he he, he says here's a reference all of our fans will understand let me mention some obscure ecw shit from 1996 <laughs> 95. You, well, Laza and Stephen <laughs> E would appreciate that. And I That's think they true. Might be That's here. true. Um, but um, yeah, as, as far as the Rocky movie goes, Tommy, you're right. And what a genius move that turned out to be for, for Sylvester Stallone and everybody else in that because they had Rocky, you know, lose the first fight by decision. And the victory is that he goes the distance. Basically, he doesn't get knocked out in his hometown of Philadelphia. He goes the distance with Apollo Creed. Because they allowed the fact, like, oh, my God, you know, we love this movie, but Rocky didn't win the title. Well, three or four years later, dun, 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 you have Rocky, too. And if you look at it, Tommy, because I saw the Rocky movies in the theater just about three or four years ago. They were all re-released in one week. I went to see all five of the original ones in the first in this week. Um, basically, there's a formula where the first fight, Rocky loses, and then in the rematch, Rocky wins. Like, if you look at Rocky three. 
Clubber Lang beats Rocky, and then an hour and a half later, Rocky beats Clubber Lang in the rematch. And uh, even that kind of formula kind of carried over into the Creed movies. And yeah, there's some variations on a theme and all that. But you're right, Tommy. A lot of times it's the the bigger thing of winning the moral battle as opposed to the actual win-loss. Well, I think we can all relate to this in other aspects of life that ain't got shit to do with sports. The chase is often more satisfying than actually obtaining your goal, right? The hunt, the climb. Climb up the ladder is what people want to see. Once you get to the top of the ladder, it's kind of like, all right, here's the top. I'm there. Great. Right. It's almost anticlimactic. We almost want to see the struggle to get to the top. And then once you're at the top, here's another formula, guys, right? A lot of these sports movies will start with either a team or a player or an athlete or whatever. They will start the movie at the top of their game. And then something catastrophic, whether it's an injury or something, you know, beyond, you know, the control of of, of man, you know, some kind of uh, act happens that causes that athlete to go sideways, and now they have to come back, the comeback trail. Uh, I got a chance to work on a movie called Bleed for This, which tells the story of Vinny Paz, uh, which if you're not a big boxing fan, you don't really have to be to find what this guy did extraordinary. And, And what he did was he was the middleweight boxing champion of the world, uh, was on top of his game, and then about three weeks to a month later after winning the title, he got into a car accident and broke his neck. Uh, And you can imagine people were not sure if he was going to walk again, let alone fight again. And then sure enough, about a year and a half later, this guy has willed himself back into the ring, had, in my opinion, the greatest comeback in sports history, and he won his title back. He actually became a champion again. So uh, that's a movie called Bleed for This, uh, which was produced by Chad Verde right here in Rhode Island. Uh, And I had a chance to be uh, one of the original writers on that movie, although I didn't get credit to write. That's called Arbitration, guys. If you're into screenwriting, it's a whole different deal. Uh, But the fact of the matter is, I ain't complaining. I still got a little bit of a paycheck on that one to do some work in the writing room. And I was just fascinated by that story. Uh, So that was the first sports movie that I worked on was Bleed for This. Uh, And it was just this great comeback story. Um, And it's kind of interesting, Mike, because, you know, uh, we're going to get to the comments in a second, but someone kind of mentioned this generally, you know, loosely. What's unique about sports movies are they can be portrayed as wild, silly comedies, you know, like movies like Major League or uh, you know, dodgeball, even you can kind of call that a sports movie. They can be wild and silly and totally zany, or they could be very raw and very kind of like dramatic, you know, movies like, um, any given Sunday, you know, that's a raw dramatic kind of football movie. Um, so it's kind of cool that there's this genre that exists where you don't find that too, too often, you know, like, yeah, there are some war comedies, but for the most part, If you're watching a war movie, it's going to be pretty fucking serious unless you're watching Stripes or some shit, you know. Uh, Very few genres have the ability to have such a wide scope of, you know, is it a comedy? Is it a drama? Is it a tweener? Uh, Is it, you know, somewhere in the middle? Um, Let's get into some of these uh, comments here. Good to see everybody this week. Uh, Laza, good day, y'all, from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Laza, what's the what's a what is their favorite sport in Australia? Like ours is probably baseball or football. What's the Australian number one sport? Is it soccer? I would imagine. Maybe or is it maybe Australian? Cricket. Is it Australian rules football? Um, all right, definitely maybe, a pro wrestling cricket. fight fan. Could be cricket. Maybe cricket. Uh, Scott says hello, everybody. What's up, Scott? It's good to see you back this week. Now, didn't Nothing Scott like the go? Films. Didn't Scott go from Europe to Boston, Tommy? He did. Mercedes. Scott Scott was there watching Mercedes Monet live, uh, which was probably a really fun appearance. Also enjoyed the Mighty Ducks franchise back in the day. You know what? Ducks fly together no matter what. That's what you got to remember. You got to get out there and get your ass in a flying V and just go out and wreck shit on the fucking ice. That's what you do. Coach Gordon Bombay up in this bitch. Scott says Dark Side of the Ring is so good. I really love that show. Uh I got to say this, you know, a lot of people will be like, yeah, right. 
But even if you're not a wrestling fan, I feel like people could watch Dark Side of the Ring and relate to it. And I think, in fact, it's a great product, not to to give them a free plug, but it's a great product for non-wrestling fans because it kind of, they do, their voiceovers do a really great job of kind of summing up this very wide scoping business and and kind of presenting it in a nice neat package for people that aren't obsessed with wrestling like myself like mike probably like scott i say that respectfully of course brother um laza says the karate kid franchise is awesome also enjoyed cobra kai mike's got the cobra kai shirt on right there yeah karate kid is classic man and it's kind of great that you mentioned that because i don't think that we often think of karate kid as a sports movie but you got to think of the 1980s and mike uh, you know, you might just about remember the 80s a little bit. People yeah. don't realize, man, like karate was a fucking mega sensation sweeping the nation in the 80s. Like in the 80s, it was all about ninjas, karate, like martial arts movies were huge. Uh, so, yeah, that definitely is a sport. And I, and I wouldn't be shocked if I bet you every strip mall across the United States from Portland, Maine to Portland, Oregon, started uh you you could see a fucking karate school open up in the strip malls after karate kid came out um well yeah really great example of like influencing the pop culture and i think you have to give a lot of credit to bruce lee as well for that because bruce lee basically you know he brought the martial arts acceptance uh to the united states he planted the seeds and i think karate kid 10 or 15 years later uh, develop those seeds, you know what I mean? And then another generation later, you'd have the UFC coming up. And now it's it's incredible the amount of different martial arts, uh, jiu-jitsu or Muay Thai, traditional American boxing, all types of different martial arts uh, explode. And yeah, Tommy, you know, uh, back when I was a kid, you know, we didn't even have UFC. And now there's there's UFC movies or there's mixed martial arts movies. I don't know if you saw this one. But Halle Berry actually produced and starred in a movie where Halle Berry herself played a UFC fighter or mixed martial arts fighter. So um, what's kind of cool yeah, about sports. No, go ahead. Please. What's no, kind of cool about what's kind of cool about sports movies is um, they are a thing that kind of marks moments in time. You know, you were talking about the classic uh, football script that you're working on where the you know leatherheads you know i think george clooney was in a movie called leathernecks or leatherheads something like that um, but you can kind of have a movie that takes place in a certain sport in a certain era that gives that particular film or tv show a certain feel to it you know like if you have a movie there was one with uh, James Earl Jones playing. It was called The Great White Hope, where he played, uh, I believe, Jack Johnson, the boxer. But that movie had a total different time period than the Rocky movies or the Creed movies or uh, any other Raging Bull. You know what I mean? So it's it's like when you have a one sport, of my favorites. Yeah, Raging Bull is excellent. Phenomenal and you have, film. Yep, and and when you have a time period in a film that relates to sports that's also powerful i like what you were saying about genres uh, tommy with sports movies i when you were listing all those things you know a comedy sports movie like the mighty ducks is a family coming of age sports movie and stuff slap like that. shot right is a pair is a spoof or a parody or a broad comedy but uh one thing that i don't think we've seen tommy and maybe we'll make this ourselves is a uh horror sports movie have you ever seen a horror i can't think of a horror sports movie can you no i can't you might be onto something there you know uh i guess uh getting cut from the team will have a whole new meeting this season <laughs> there you go <laughs> see we're already writing that shit we are already got the um, script <laughs> yeah i think uh you know another thing that you mentioned mike you know conor mcgregor okay Biggest UFC star probably in the last 20 years, right? A household name. Everybody knows who he is. With sports movies, in particular fight movies, there's this notion that whoever's the star of the fight movie, we want them to have a bit of legitimacy. You mentioned Bruce Lee. Everybody knew that Bruce Lee was a legit martial artist. He could actually fuck you up. Steven Seagal, everybody knew, legit, could fuck you up if he had to. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme was a professional kickboxer. Chuck Norris what trained with bruce lee so there was this element where with these fighting movies where as fans we do like an element of 
legitimacy. We want to know that the star is not only throwing fake movie punches and kicks, but they could really fuck you up if they had to. And I think that's what we're seeing kind of today's version of that is Conor McGregor now saying, wait a minute. I'm going to get my fucking head kicked in, potentially choked out, and have to train my balls off for several months to be in a UFC fight when I can just go be in a movie and make believe and get paid just as much, if not more. Now, granted, not every fighter can do that. Not every fighter has the star power, the charisma. But Conor McGregor is smart. He's saying, yeah, you know, I'm 36 years old, 37 years old. I probably got another couple fights in me if I really wanted to. Or... I could take this fame that I've built and transition into, like, look at The Rock, you know, using an, a, an, their athletic background to build this movie career that just takes off. Uh, and I got to say really quick, and I haven't even seen the fucking movie yet, okay? But I'm seeing a lot of shit talking about this new Roadhouse movie online. Right. And I'm seeing everybody say, what a waste of time. It was so not as good as the original Oh, these fights are so unrealistic. Patrick Swayze is way better. I fucking love Patrick Swayze. He's the best. But the reality is it's twenty. It's 2024, and this is a modernized, new approach. Yeah, maybe some of the fight scenes are a little stylized and ridiculous, but you like John Wick, don't you? That ain't fucking realistic. It's a movie, guys. And stop comparing it to the original. Because when we make remakes, they're not meant to be compared to the original. It's a whole new deal, okay? It's just like... We're paying homage to something from the past. Had the filmmakers went and just shot for shot, recreated fucking Roadhouse, everyone would be like, well, what the fuck is this? You might as well just go pop in Roadhouse. Go go play Patrick Swayze's 80s movie Roadhouse. You know, like people will never be happy. And it's just upsetting that they can't just like sit back and enjoy a fucking movie. Well, Tommy, I'd actually disagree with that. I think the producers or the studios actually know exactly what they're doing when they make something like a, a Roadhouse or, you know, the Wonka movies outside of the sports realm, you know, um, because they know that the audience, a good portion of people can't stop themselves from wanting to compare, even if they hate watch, even if it's I'm going to watch this new Roadhouse just to bitch about it and tweet about how much it's not as good as the original 1989 Patrick Swayze one. Well, if they watch it just to hate it, they've still watched it, right? No, so, that's I mean, true. <laughs> a, a but, movie that has a built-in marketing scheme of you're going to watch this new Willy Wonka with Timothy Chalamet because you're going to have to compare him to Johnny Depp, who 10 or 15 years ago you had to pair, compare him to Gene Wilder. Part of the marketing scheme is we we're going to get you to watch this thing one way or the other. Yeah, so there's you definitely have... there's a curiosity factor there for sure, uh, and I think that that curiosity factor gets people to to watch the movie. But at the same time, like, what do people expect? Do they really expect you to take the script from 1980, whatever, dust it off, and just have all new actors say those very lines from the 80s? It just I don't. I guess what I'm saying is I don't understand what people are expecting. You know what I mean? Like, yes, this is a remake, but of course it's not going to be a carbon copy of the original. Otherwise, what's the fucking point? Well, Tommy, I'll, I'll say this, buddy. You know that I go to the movies four or five, six times a week. When I go see something that's, and people, a lot of people in the general public, oh, there's no good movies now. They're just, they're just remaking stuff from the 80s and the 90s and blah, blah, blah. Tommy, I see a lot of brand new movies in the theater all the time, right? But when I go see a, a new movie, for instance, The Iron Claw, which doesn't, that's a wrestling movie, but it doesn't have, it's not a sequel. It's a, it's a first movie of a, it's of a standalone a, product, Mike. It's a, it's, when I go see a standalone product that doesn't have a superhero tie in or it's not a sequel, the theaters, oftentimes it's me in there taking off my shoes, buddy, making myself comfortable because oh, I'm God. all alone. In the th I'm all alone in the theater. But if I okay. go see something that's an X-Men or a part five or a part six of some series, then the theater has a lot more people. So if the same audience that complains that there's no good movies out there, my response to that, Tommy, is the movies are fine. It's the audiences that are no good. Mike, just promise me that when there are people in the theaters, you keep your shoes on, right? Well, then I wear I wear sandals, buddy. In oh, that case, okay. so I don't. Well, I, the, the important thing is well, that I'm that makes sense. All right, let's go back to some of these comments here. Kim Kaling says, what's up? Good to see you, Kim. Always here to hang with us. 
Last Boy Scout, man, that's a deep cut. Haven't seen that one in a long time. Uh, quick side note, uh, at the time when The Last Boy Scout was written, starring Bruce Willis and Damon Wayans, uh, the writer to that movie was the highest paid screenwriter of all time. It was the, the most, it was the highest paid script ever. And the movie totally fucking tank. It took a big shit and nobody cared about it. So I always thought that was kind of funny. Um, have both of you had a chance to watch The Iron Claw? You know, Scott, I haven't watched The Iron Claw. I believe Mike has. For me, and it's not, I'm not saying I would never watch it. And this is going to sound weird, but those movies are just almost too close to home for me to watch. I love the Von Erichs. I, I am so embedded into the history of pro wrestling. I know just about every little turn, twist and turn of the story. And it's just hard for me to watch it and keep that shit out of my mind and just enjoy the movie. Like, I wish that I could. I wish I could not have all of this knowledge in my mind that will immediately make me kind of rip it apart or poke holes in the, the storytelling approach. So, and again, I know that that's not fair. And eventually I will watch the movie. But that was one that I just, I didn't exactly run out to see for that reason. Because I know that it's not super historically accurate. I saw it twice, Scott, and uh, I did do a couple of, I did actually three reviews of that film because I found there to be a lot of meat on the bone with that one. And I did interview over on uh, my YouTube channel, one Mike Messier, I interviewed Kevin Anton, who played Harley Race in the film. And uh, Scott, for my two cents, buddy, I love the movie The Iron Claw, but like Tommy says, it's not historically accurate. The first time that I saw The Iron Claw, I found myself, like Tommy was fearing, comparing notes to reality, like where's Chris Von Erich and that guy doesn't look like Ric Flair and et cetera. But I actually enjoyed the movie the second time I watched it more because I kind of said, hey, this is an alternate universe type of experience. This does not have to be well, That's a good way movie. to look at it. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned um, uh, Rudy earlier, Tommy. In that film, I'm not going to ruin it for you, but there's a lot of elements in the Rudy uh, football movie that are uh, dramatically enhanced, let's put it that way. Rudy is not... Sure, and I'm not about to have an argument about Rudy versus the Iron Claw, but the Iron Claw, we're literally talking about like brothers that were part of the family that died that just weren't included in the movie. That also, we're talking about a movie about brothers that tragically commit suicide, and the filmmakers decided to literally remove an entire brother who commits suicide from the story. So it's kind of like, isn't that what this fucking movie is about? What are you removing major historical elements like that? Another story that our and action fans don't want to hear about, so we'll save that conversation for an off-air debate, but let's keep going. I did ask Laza a question. I want to give him his credit here. Um, Australia is controversial with its main sports as Aussie rules versus rugby league. Ah, rugby. Okay. All right. So rugby seems like the big game over there. And uh, yeah, if you've never seen Bleed for this, Laza, check it out. Um, I also have a couple cameos in there as an actor, which was kind of a fun deal for me. Uh, Scott says, if you could write a sports movie on a specific sports person or era that doesn't exist yet, what would it be and why? Oof. I got to tell you, man, that's a... That's a really good question, Scott. And there's so many of them uh, that kind of come to mind. Um, but for me, I, I mean, you know, again, if we're if we're able to call wrestling, if we're calling wrestling a sport, I mean, I would never be able to write this because you would never be able to get the full blown true story. But I think a movie about the mid to late '90s wrestling wars, the Monday Night Wars, like a movie titled The Monday Night Wars, just about Eric Bischoff and Ted Turner battling, you know, WCW versus WWE, WWF at the time, McMahon versus Bischoff. I think that that could certainly have a lot of cinematic qualities to it. I also think, here's one for you, you know, and I think you'd have to wait a long time to make this movie. Probably, I don't know, maybe not, maybe, maybe not. But I think a really almost dark movie about Michael Jordan would be something that I would love to make someday a movie that really explores the gambling, a movie that really explores the death of Michael Jordan's father, which is still a little bit of a fucking mystery, a little some some shadiness to that whole deal. If you Google Michael Jordan's father's murder and you'll see some shady shenanigans there, Michael Jordan's failed baseball career. I mean, like these are things that I would love to see in a Jordan movie. Um, I'm getting kind of goosebumps just thinking about how cool that could be. 
problem about that is Michael Jordan is like Walt Disney in a sense. Right. And whenever you're dealing with a character like that, maybe he'd be uncomfortable with him, you know, with the movie like that, representing these stories when he's on the golf course, literally playing a hundred thousand dollars a hole, like betting people, you know what I mean? Like crazy fucking gambling happening. And, you know, there might be, I don't want to, I don't want Michael Jordan to give me a call on my phone and get mad at me. I don't think that's going to happen, but <laughs> there might've been some womanizing going on there you know we don't really hear much about michael jordan michael's kind of you know we have these story. We, we all have everybody knows a michael jordan story or two that we've seen on instagram or in one of these like little gifts we all know about his insane competitive nature i think that right. it would be really cool to capture that competitive nature uh and i don't know man i don't know who plays michael jordan that's a tough tough uh tough michael role Beach to cast michael but yeah Beach i mean yeah, maybe. Let's face it. I'm telling you, man. And again, like I said, like I don't think you'd be able to see that movie happen for a long, long time. Maybe even after Jordan's passing, um, which it's hard to even think of because to me, it's like Michael Jordan's like a god. He's like beyond a human. You, it's hard to even think of a day when Michael Jordan's not roaming the earth. Um, but yeah, I think to answer your question in a roundabout way, Scott, I would love to make a Jordan um, a Jordan movie and just either call it like the goat. Or MJ, you know, just MJ, something like that. Jordan, maybe just Jordan, you know. Um, but yeah, that's that's my answer to that one. Let's keep it going. What about what about you, Mike? What would be your sports movie that you'd like to write? Well, I have it alluded to in my book, Fighter Play Basketball, which uh, I think Laza has purchased. Uh, but I uh, I like the Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson story. So if you had, Ooh, uh, that's a you good had one. A, thanks. If you had a couple of big boys, because you need. It, Buster Douglas was a huge guy. He was like 6'4", 6'5", and Tyson was not as tall. He was about 5'10", but you but need a couple. Built like of... a brick shit house. Exactly. So you you need a couple of guys to play those two. I think the I think Buster Douglas would actually be the harder guy to cast. If you, if this was 30 years ago, you could cast a, a, who's our buddy, Forrest Whitaker. He would, he would have been a good Buster Douglas 30 or 40 years ago, but not now. Um, but yeah, I think that fight that took place in Japan in February of 1990, that would be really interesting. And uh, I like what you were saying about your Jordan thoughts, Tommy, because I did see that movie about the sneaker deal with Matt Damon um, that basically it actually features more of... Uh, a yeah, character. Mike, I, uh, what is that called? The uh, Air? Is that called Air, yeah. I believe? Yeah, yeah, it's and funny, it's... And, and and I gotta say, I think that that was really smart of the filmmakers to make Jordan very much just like not the four figure the, the in the front of that movie, you know. Yeah, his mom, his mom is uh, the lady from Rhode Island, uh, the big uh, Viola Davis. Viola Davis. Yes, she plays Jordan's mom, who's she's really the representative of Team Jordan of the family, right? So. What I loved about that movie, Tommy, was that you're taking on a totally different aspect of sports. That's the marketing of, of sports advertising and that Jordan uh, Nike deal, Air Jordan sneakers and everything. That what was a phenomenal. That is, I mean, was, I've got a pair yeah. of Jordans strapped to my feet right now, you know. Right. And and what I what I when you talk when you're talking about earlier about sports movies, Tommy's and cliches and stuff like that. But that movie went somewhere different, which is taking a different aspect of sports and making a whole movie about it, a narrative film that's also the same topic's been covered in documentaries about Jordan and his sneaker deals, but you bring together the A-list actors like Viola Davis and Matt Damon, and you have yourself a feature film. Yeah, and I think it's fascinating, too. I think that, you know, again, like, you don't have to be a sports fan to know who Michael Jordan is. You don't have to be a sports fan to know what a pair of Jordan sneakers are. Uh, so, it, you know, kind of transcends the lines of of sports in general, which is pretty cool. And again, I'm a big pop culture guy, so all that shit is right in my wheelhouse. Uh, real quick, Laza says that boxing's big in Australia, and so is MMA. Cricket's there. They got the NBL, which is a, a lot like the rip off the, the baby brother version of the nba which is cool um scott says i agree dark side episode on the von erics was hard to watch you know there's a great if you, if you haven't seen it scott and it might still be on the network there's a great documentary wwe did called um the triumph and tragedy uh, i think it's called triumph and tragedy it's the story of the von erics to me for my money that's the most deep dive and accurate kind of 
telling of the Von Erich story. So if you haven't seen that one, check it on out. And if anyone saw Iron Claw and they want to know the real story, watch Triumph and Tragedy or Tragedy and Triumph. I don't know. Google that shit. It'll tell you the right answer. Um, and and good point by Laza. He actually uh, he said, you know what? The, the closest thing to a sports horror movie is Death Race. Remember that movie, Death Race? With, I never uh, saw Death Race, Tommy. Jason I never Statham. Saw Death Race is uh, fun, I... man. It's a fun movie, and that's a it's a racing movie. Again, we don't. We don't think of racing as a sport sometimes, and that's not fair. Um, there's a lot of great NASCAR movies. There's a couple of really good ones out there. Um, you know, we just had uh, Ford versus Ferrari come out. So this genre is just so fucking deep, man. I mean, it's uh, it, it's pretty incredible when you think about all the different sports and all the different genres that kind of, it's almost like subgenres within the genre. Um but yeah, sports aren't going anywhere. Sports movies are not going anywhere for a long time. Um, I never saw the uh, the Ricky Bobby movie. I still haven't seen that with uh, Talladega Nights. Yeah, I never. I haven't. I haven't seen that one. I missed that one. Um, yeah, man. You know, like um, I'll ask you this, Tommy. Do you consider something like the sci-fi sci-fi Arnold Schwarzenegger classic, The Running Man? Is that no. a sports movie? I mean, no, is, it's not. It's not a sports movie because that's not a sport. That's you know that's science fiction craziness. Uh, I think it's, a sports almost, movie has to. It has to be based in reality. You know what I mean? Okay. Like sports movies have to be about an actual sport, sporting event. Um, yeah, I think that you know that that's just. It's cool. It's interesting to think. It's of, brutal um, competition. It's it's like a reality show in the future, an hypothetical future. Actually, and, uh, I want to go back. Uh, I want to go back to Scott's question because I got another movie idea that I would fucking love to make, and it's not sure. quite sports, but it's kind of sports. I would love. I would love. Love world. If you're listening to me, let me will this into existence. I would love to tell the full, uncut version of the American Gladiators. The famous TV show from the early 90s, mid 90s, American Gladiators, it pitted a bunch of kind of bodybuilders and, uh, you know, washed up athletes, people that kind of never made it. And they had all of these kind of Olympic style or I shouldn't say Olympic, uh, almost like obstacle courses that you would run and compete against these gladiators. If you haven't seen American Gladiators, Google that shit. It's one of the most kind of it's just entertaining because it's just such a weird show. And although it's not typically a sport, it was kind of advertised and positioned as a sport in the 90s. Uh, you know, this, these kind of athletes that were jacks of all trades. Uh, and if you, there's a great documentary, I believe, on Netflix, but I'm not sure. It's 30 Google, for 30. Google, is it a 30 for 30? Yeah, I Google that so. shit. Whew, man, when you see the behind the scenes stories of what was going on during the American Gladiators tour, uh, you had a bunch of juiced up, party loving, you know, mid to late twenties, early thirties, beautiful people uh, traveling on a tour bus, going arena to arena to take on, you know, the the local hopefuls uh, in right. the area and all these sporting events, and just crazy shit happened. So, going back to Scott's question, I'd love to make an American Gladiators movie someday. Um, but yeah, Mike, I don't think this genre is going anywhere. Like I said, I think it's very much ritualistic in the sense that you can almost tell the same stories over and over again. And as long as you dust that shit off a little bit, polish it up, add some new elements, make it current, people are going to be coming back to the theater to watch sports movies really until uh, until we're, we're uh, no longer on this planet, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, Tommy, the, behind me, you see this image uh, from the movie Field of Dreams, which I just two weeks ago I saw on the big screen. The movie is from 1989, and it's being re-released in 2024 for the 35th anniversary. I had never seen it on the big screen, so I went and uh, enjoyed it, and um, you know, it holds up. I mean, this movie is 35 years old, and it still holds up today. Um, and, you know, we're talking about the, the Rocky and the but I was going to say about these Creed movies, the Creed movies with Michael B. Jordan playing the son of Apollo Creed, they created their own successful sequel franchise, so successful, as a matter of fact, that 
unfortunately for me, Sylvester Stallone was not even in the last Creed movie. He, he sat on the sidelines because of a financial dispute. So it's interesting that I'm sure that there are kids today, Tommy, that go see the Creed movies that never watched one of the original Rocky movies. You uh, know what I mean? It's so, it's so painful for you to say that yet. That's true though. So, so accurate and so true. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I think that it, it, it's, it's, again, it just shows you that these movies are just going to keep going and going. Like, you know, I remember when I was in, I want to say high school or college, a movie called the longest yard came out and it was a movie about, um, you know, prisoners that play football uh, and they're playing the guards, prisoners versus guards. And I remember I liked that movie because it had a lot of cool cameos from not only pro athletes, but also wrestlers. You know, Goldberg was in it. Stone Cold Steve Austin was in it. A lot of great wrestlers were in that movie. I think the great Kali. Uh, and I remember I, re I remember my dad being like, oh, yeah, that was a that was a, you know, Burt Reynolds movie, you know, 30 years ago. And I remember like watching that and then going back and watching the Burt Reynolds movie after. And this might be blasphemy. I might get shit for saying this. The Burt Reynolds movie didn't really do it for me as much as the current one with Adam Sandler did. And that's because I'm a product, I, you know, at the time I was a product of that current era. So like, that's what's great about these movies. You can keep telling these stories because like, yeah, maybe my dad in that era would have related to Burt Reynolds a little bit more to a kid. I'm like, you know, and don't get me wrong. Since then, I've gotten smartened up to just how fucking cool Burt Reynolds is. But when I'm a teenager, it's like Burt Reynolds, like the guy with the mustache, like who cares, you know? Yeah, there's a thing with 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 '70s movies in particular, Tommy. I've noticed that um, a lot of the movies from the '70s that are very heralded and rightfully so, their editing style is a lot different. It's a lot looser, is the word that it's I would slower. use. Like the pacing slower. is slower. Yeah, the pacing is slower. It's looser. It's it's even like looser and slower than stuff and something from like the 1950s film noir, where things were very choppy and kind of bullety and. It's just interesting how different decades and different eras have different feels for movies uh, or the movies feel different based on when they were made. And sometimes people of different generations just don't relate to things made before that they were around. So, you know, uh, let's see. Ariana says, what's up, Ariana? Air Bud. To be honest, my favorite sports movie is Air Bud. Hey, listen, you know what? That's a great movie. It's a, a it's, a, it's what I call a genre bender. Because now we've got it's a sports movie, but it's also an animal movie. So it's like, yeah, you get yourself a basketball playing dog. And how about this? A lot of people may not know this about the Air Bud franchise. But Air Bud went on to make several other types of... Like, that dog played every fucking sport under the sun. Talk about a very athletic dog. They had that dog playing soccer. They had that dog playing football. They had that dog playing baseball. What a multi-sport athlete Bud is. But they're smart. The producers were like, oh, the kids loved Air Bud. Well, if you can, you can shoot a basket with your nose, you can throw a football with your nose, you can hit a hockey puck, whatever. So Air Bud, that man, they should call that Air Bud the license to print money. Air, Air Bud meets uh, Bo Jackson. Um, yeah, multi-sport athlete. Um, here's a question for you, Tommy. Um is there any sports movies that you think drop the ball? Like sports movies that were a big disappointment? I mean, I'm trying to think of that's one a good myself. that's just a fun that's just a fun headline. Sports movies that drop the ball. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Bad sports movies. You know, I've got one for you that a lot of people I, and again, I'll probably get shit for saying this one. Um, I actually I want to look up the title, but okay. Yeah, no, I know what the title is. I know what the title is. You know what movie I didn't like? Tell and me. a lot of people liked it. And maybe I'm maybe I gotta rewatch it. Maybe it's me. I didn't really like Warrior. Warrior was the movie that came oh, out okay. that was supposed to be this big MMA movie. You know, it's gonna be the kind of the MMA of movie of all MMA movies. Nick Nolte's in it. Nick Nolte's great in the film. Um, I believe it's Tom Hardy playing the main character who's this, you know, juggernaut type fighter. And to me, it just missed the mark, and I think I know why. Uh the reason why, why they dropped the ball. Well, because I think we've become so embedded with, you know, branding is everything. So if I watch a UFC, if I watch an MMA movie and it's not the UFC that they're fighting in for the big final main event, I'm out of it. Like it was a fictitious fight league. 
And to right. me, if it's like a, if it's this fictitious fight league, mm, I don't know. It, it it I just didn't I didn't buy that it had the big sweeping scope of this massive world heavyweight title because to me it still seemed like you know even the main event in that movie still felt like something that could be shot at like Twin River Casino like any looked like the it looked like the arena of any bum fucking casino that you go into it didn't seem like it had that massive stage appeal. Uh, and granted, not every sports movie that I love is, you know, sanctioned by the NFL or the MLB because, you know, I love any given Sunday and that's about a completely fictitious football league. But the difference is the arenas still look like massive arenas. The the locker rooms look like NFL locker rooms. I felt as though Warrior kind of just looked like everything was dialed back. You know, I think that's the best way to say it. Like they were trying hard to make it look like the UFC, but it just came off as small to me. Yeah, that's fair. I think uh, one problem with um, movies that try to portray mixed martial arts is I, I could be wrong, but I think UFC is very tight to their chest with who they allow to portray them officially in a film. I was in a film called Hard Luck a long time ago that, they thought they were going to have the official UFC seal of endorsement, and then seemingly at the last minute it didn't. So the film drastically cut out a, a whole mixed martial arts storyline exactly for the point you're making, Tommy, is that the filmmaker, uh, Mario Van Peebles, directed. I think he was such a UFC fan that once the UFC maybe wasn't totally involved, uh, he didn't really want to keep that storyline in the film, uh, which was unfortunate. Um I was well, because, thinking of you know, uh, you know, I'll let you get back to that. But to play to that point, when you're making movies, guys, and this is a quote of Eric Bischoff, who's a great, great television producer, wrestling uh, guy, who's you know behind a lot of great wrestling victories in, from a producing standpoint, and he always says that it's always you know things like that will always come off as less than, you know right. what I mean? And if and if you can't be greater than, be different than but never be less than. So it's like if all of a sudden like, oh, well, we wanted the UFC, but now it's going to be called the, uh, you know, the WFC, the World Fighting Championship. It's just bullshit. And the audience immediately knows it's bullshit. It's the reason why we don't want to be drinking Dr. Thunder. We want to be drinking Dr. Pepper. You know, we're not fucking idiots, you know, and, and sometimes like that can break the illusion. It takes you out of the illusion. Yeah, the movie, um, I try to think of... Uh... Any given Sunday, the football movie initially was supposed to be with the NFL, but once the NFL read the script and they realized that steroids and drugs, oh, and yeah. once they realized that Oliver Stone was going to pull no punches in his betrayal of a football league, the NFL was like, we don't want to be this football league. So I think they called the team the Miami Sharks and uh, everything like that because uh, some of these sports leagues, leagues, buddy, they sell themselves to the consumer on this kind of myth that we're the all American boys and, you know, sportsmanship and competition. And, you know, we've kind of learned, uh, we've matured as an audience. We see through that hype. Now, uh, there was a sports movie yeah. that I say was a disappointment to me a little bit, not too much, but I think it was the Roberto Duran pit film, maybe even eight or nine years ago. It was a feature film, not a documentary, but a feature. Yeah, film I remember that taking a big shit, as they say in the business. It, nobody it, cared it about was, that. De Niro, I think De Niro was in the movie too, and just nobody gave a fuck. Yeah, he was obviously too old to play Roberto, but I think the movie. I don't think it went into the No Moss fight. I think it ended when Roberto beats Leonard the first time, and um, I think movies, Tommy, that portray a complicated character and they kind of simplify them and clean them up and put the all-american boy or you know nice guy routine on a complicated character it feels disingenuous to reality and i i don't like that that's why i kind of dug your jordan idea to kind of take some of the wings off of air jordan the angel that well, is. listen I, i'm not trying to take the wings off of air jordan i'm just trying to i would just be trying to tell an honest story i think a lot of people wonder that about michael jordan i mean you look at the guy we all watched the documentary series. You know, The Last Dance was fucking phenomenal. I watched it twice. And I think everybody left that movie, that documentary series being like, I love Michael Jordan, but this motherfucker is on another level when it comes to craziest competitive drive I've ever seen. And you can only imagine that if that's how he is playing basketball 
I'm sure he approaches other aspects of his life with that same kind of style and approach. Uh, I mean, we're literally talking about a guy who his best friend was Charles Barkley. They were best friends for 25 years. And then one day Charles told him, like, you know, I think you're surrounded by too many yes men. And Jordan, like, literally never fucking talked to him again. And they're not friends anymore. So, like, this right. guy's very in- – he's an intense person. And I think that people would want to know what it's really like. Another sports movie – Scott, what a great fucking question you asked, by the way. Because another sports movie that I would love to make someday, there's a great book called Boys Will Be Boys. And it is the tell-all story of the early 90s, mid-90s Dallas Cowboys, which if you're not a big football fan, if you don't know, man, those Cowboys partied. Uh, they literally had like a mansion like that they would go to just for like hookers, cocaine, and craziness. Uh, so this was a football team that was like on top of the world. They won three Super Bowls in a matter of, I think, five seasons. Uh, a true dynasty. Every little kid in the 90s wanted to have some kind of Cowboys jacket, Cowboys shirt, whatever. They were basically right. the the bulls of football, if you will, in that era. Deion Sanders, Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin. You had all these guys. And the truth is they were fucking wild. Uh, so this book, Boys Will Be Boys, gets into all the shenanigans that was going on off the football field. And I think that I've said this before, man. People love to be let behind the curtain, right? Yeah. Everybody wants a look behind the scenes and feel like they're watching something that they're not supposed to watch. Remember, we talked about this on our viral videos, which you can, you can watch in the archives from last week, our viral video episode. What makes a lot of viral videos so great is we're watching shit that we might not supposed to be seeing. We're probably not supposed to see that, right? And we ended up catching it. Well, that's what's so great about you know, some of these sports movies, and that's what would be so great about Boys Will Be Boys as a movie, because it's like, hey, man, we've been trying to bury these fucking stories. You're going to go out and make a whole movie about that now? Um, and that's what everybody wants. We all want a little flavor that we can't normally snack on. Uh, what's up, Stephen E? How you doing, brother? Good to see you this week. Stephen E met Mario Van Peebles in a elevator at ABC, which is pretty cool. I saw that Mario has a new Western out. Uh, I saw it. I can't yeah, of, the uh, can't think of the name. Was it good? Outlaw Posse. Outlaw Posse. Yeah, it was good. It was. It was. Uh, it was an interesting movie, man. And once again, Tommy. I mean, I'm not putting it down, but the reality was, I was the only person in the theater. So here's a here's a totally unique film. It's a western film. It's it's a different type of western. And uh, the audience who wants to see new stuff, they'll come out and support new stuff some of the time. So. Get out to the theaters, everybody. It's a it's a great time to go to the movies, Tommy, because a lot of these theaters, uh, like Cinemark, Regal, and AMC, they do subscription deals where you can pay by the month to basically see as many movies as you can handle. So the audience oh, that complains, cool. the audience likes to complain uh, about movie tickets being too expensive, which I understand. But if you get one of these monthly subscription packages, it's very affordable. Don't be a cheap motherfucker. Go out to the movie theaters and support that shit. And then you have a voice. Then you can say whether you like the movie or not. A lot of people are just so quick to be opinionated about a film and they haven't even seen it. Um, this has been a really great discussion this week. I really appreciate everyone joining. A lot of great comments in the feed. Thanks for watching along. I love sports. I always have. I wasn't really the best athlete growing up, but God damn it, I tried. Uh, and still to this day, a lot of people don't know this, but when I'm on set, I always keep a baseball with me because I just like to hold this thing and kind of, it's my own little stress ball. I, I work the palm oils into that bitch and I kind of just do this while I'm at monitor and I sit with it and it just makes me feel like I got the ball and I'm in the game. Uh, and I think that's what's so great about sports. Uh, it could have nothing to do with being on a field or playing a game, but it can inspire you and you can use this inspiration and lend it to other parts of your life. Um, so if you're down and out and you're looking for a little kick in the ass, a little proverbial fire lit under you, pop in one of your favorite sports movies and you know disappear for an hour and a half to two hours and some full field motivation tests of the human spirit. Um, Really appreciate that, guys. Scott here, Laz is chiming in. Been a pleasure. We're all having a lot of fun today. I know you guys always appreciate suggestions for future episodes. I'd love to see an episode on sci-fi movies. Scott, 
Ask and you shall receive, brother. We're going to do that. We're going to do a sci-fi episode coming up just for you and everybody else to chime in because I love a little science fiction myself. Um, and Laza has another idea, too. Uh, what do we got here? Laza says, I have an episode for hidden gem movies that don't get enough credit. That's a that's a great idea. Underrated. Like, underrated like movies. Something. The underdogs of movies. Uh, and hey, guys, if you have any ideas for shows that you'd like us to chat about, we're yapping every goddamn Tuesday on this thing. So help us out a little bit. Give us some ideas of things that you'd like us to talk about. And we'll, uh, if it makes sense, we'll do it on the show here. Also, if you have any movie questions, I know I've said this before, but I think people get nervous. Uh, but like, if you have any movie questions at all, whether it's how do I do this? I want to write. I'm an actor. I'm a producer. Drop that shit in the comments. And Mike and I will get to it, even if it's, you know, drop your comment down. You're watching right now. You're not watching live. If you have an idea, you want to ask us something, drop it in the comments. Next week, we'll talk about it on the show. and uh, Or you can even come on live with us streaming from my YouTube channel. A couple quick plugs. I'm going to be dropping the trailer to The Florist, which is a show that I'm really excited about. We're going to be dropping that trailer next week, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, and then we'll probably be doing a, an entire full-blown episode just on The Florist, not next week, uh, but a couple weeks down the road, because I want to wait for it to actually be available so that when I'm chirping it up, people can actually go and check it out. Um, and as always, if you haven't, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I can't tell you how much it means to me when you do that. And uh, click the bell, so that way you'll get notified anytime some new videos drop. You know I got a load of cat videos dropping down on you and i've been editing uh my movie from mississippi so i'm putting up some exclusive behind the scenes content from the editing room up on there it's all going down you can find me on instagram at tom Danucci. um reach out say hello i don't bite and uh there's no such thing as a silly question or a dumb question so just if you don't know and you're new at this or even if you just get started ask us questions we'll give you answers Mike, would you like to promote anything before we say goodbye? Oh, it's good stuff, Tommy. Well, I think I could be wrong, buddy, but I think next week will actually be episode number 75. Is that accurate? Woo! So I don't know what you call that because it's not 50, it's not 100. I guess it's 75, but I don't know if there's a, a special silver star or whatever the fuck. But episode 75, it's going to be a lot of fun next week. And, uh, yeah, for me, buddy, it's, you know, go to MikeMessier.com. I've got a bunch of different YouTube channels. The one artist, Mike Messier, I've been building up. That's my artwork. The uh, one, Mike Messier, is where my Mike's instant movie reviews. A lot of people watch them on Facebook, but if you subscribe, that helps that channel, One Mike Messier. Uh, my own films and Messier Mantra are over on One Artist. Uh, I'm sorry, One Man in a Camera Films. And my original channel is uh, One Pro Wrestling and Sports Fan that I think Laza discovered me on, and so on and so forth, buddy. So if people want to see any of my stuff the easiest way is to go to mikemessier.com and scroll to the bottom where all the links are at uh my books and so forth and uh another good episode buddy i mean today we took on a topic that we could go on for weeks and months i mean there's oh yeah we didn't, we, we didn't, we didn't even, even scrape the surface brother well we might have to put this for like episode 85 or episode 106 for like sports documentaries because uh well you the know Lennox we can maybe Lewis do brother one, Oh, shit, I sure. forgot. That's right. We made the Lennox Lewis one. I, I made a documentary, My Father, Muhammad Ali. There's there's so much with right. sports. I, I think you're right. I think we are going to have to revisit this and do a sports movies part two down the road. Maybe, you know what, Mike? Why don't we bust that out during like in the fall, during the NFL season? Because I'll tell you real quick, I'll leave everyone with this. This is one of my favorite times of the year for sports, but my true favorite, favorite, favorite time of year for sports is right around September, October, because that's when you've got, there's like one day of the year. There's only like a couple weeks where this happens, but it's right. the perfect storm where like NFL, NBA, baseball, and NHL are all fucking happening at once. Like that happens for like the most fleeting little couple week stretch. When all that shit's happening, I love it. Like I said, I'm a sports junkie, but there's a lot worse things you can be addicted to. Uh, and we hope that you're addicted to and action filmmaking podcast. We hope to see you next week. Uh, we're going to hit you up with a topic real soon. Mike and I are still kind of noodling that around. Who knows? Maybe we will do science fiction movies. Maybe we'll uh, 
Maybe we'll go with that one next week. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Everyone keep kicking ass. Stay motivated. We love you, and we'll see you next week.